What's up guys, Miles here checking in with another lowdown. Today I got something new, something exciting to talk about with you guys. Um, about a week ago I posted a story on the Free Hill Life page that I will be doing a Q&A. Um, got a couple questions, I'm going to be responding to a few of those questions today. Um, I kind of want to make this maybe a monthly, maybe every two or three weeks, kind of want to do a Q&A, keep you guys involved if you have any new questions that pop up or something you want to talk about. Definitely want to start doing this more and more. So it really could be anything as far as gear problems or maybe you're looking for something new. You have a specific question on a new piece of gear. That's what I'm here for to help you guys and really want to keep that engagement up with you guys as the viewers. So let's get started. Um, first, I have a question from John Dufay. Um, he says that he went from O1s to axles, then back to O1s, and could not rip nearly as hard. What gives, John says. Um, John, sounds like you were looking to switch it up, go from the O1 to that 22 Designs axle. Um, personally, 22 Designs axle is one of my favorite bindings. Um, you probably could ski a little bit better on that axle, uh, maybe a little bit more control, maybe a little bit more power, as well as you do have a little bit more customization with that axle where you can move that slick pin forward, backward, or in the middle, kind of give you a little bit of a different pivot position, um, as well as that binding is going to be a little bit more powerful. You're going to be able to kind of drive that ski a little bit. Um, if you didn't, then went back to the O1, Maybe the pivot position felt a little off to you, or maybe the springs were a little bit stiffer in that axle, which made you be able to drive that ski better or rip as hard on the axle compared to that O1. Um, so yeah, there's a couple different possibilities that it could have been. Me personally, I would probably say to keep on that axle, keep tearing it up on the 22 designs. Um, a couple different reasons, like I said, more powerful you're going to have a little bit more control as well as parts for those BD ones are becoming pretty hard to find. So cartridges, front cables, tow cages, things like that. Um, if you're having O1 problems, parts are starting to break, you're kind of going to be stuck in a little bit of a situation if you can't find those parts. So whereas the 22 designs axle, they are still making, still producing parts. We get a lot of parts in from 22 designs that, we sell to customers to help fix their bindings as well as we do do a little bit of the warranty work. Maybe you bring it in, we can send it to them, figure it out there. So definitely would recommend sticking with that Axel. Um, he also then asks, what is the biggest thing he will notice from switching to NTN from the 22 Designs Axel? Um, real quick, I'll show you a little demonstration here compared to the Outlaw to the Axel. So the biggest thing that you're going to notice, 22 Designs Axle here, um, the biggest thing you will notice is you're going to have a lot more lateral control in the Outlaw. So in the Axle, let's say you're skiing down, you really go to edge that boot, you go, your boot's in here like this, you go to turn that boot, pressure that edge. This binding will have a little bit of play where if I twist this heel throw, it were to be like this, if I were to twist this heel throw, that cable is going to move a little bit instead of the ski hopping up on edge. So if you look at the outlaw, you get your boot engaged here. If I go to turn my foot one way or the other, if I go to edge that ski and really power that edge in an NTN binding, specifically this one being the outlaw, is your boot's going to be fully engaged with the binding and you're going to have 100% lateral control. So when I go to edge on this binding, edge with this ski, I'm going to be able to throw that ski up on edge with the NTN, whereas sometimes on the 75, you do have a little bit of play, a little bit of wiggle. So that's going to be the biggest difference, um, switching to NTN from the axles, as well as you don't have to deal with the heel throw or a rear cable anymore. Um, throw that NTN ski down, step into it, as well as you then do have the option for brakes on a couple of the newer NTN bindings. So pretty awesome. Um, another thing you will notice is you're going to have a little bit more power to fully engage that ski 
pressure out that ski where on the axle, you still do have a lot of power. NTN will just give you that little bit more that you're looking for. So that is going to be the difference from the axle to an NTN binding, um, more power, lateral control, step in ability. So yeah, for sure. So uh, moving on, we have a question from Alex Baker. Um, beginner setup tips. What did you wish you knew when you started? So what did I wish I knew when I started telemark skiing? Um, one thing that sticks out to me is you're gonna fall, you're gonna crash, it's hard. It is a kind of a completely different turn. It's kind of a different way to ski. It's, I mean, a lot of people that are good alpine skiers can hop on a tele setup and pick it up pretty quick. But if you are new to it, you're kind of getting into it, you kind of have to relearn the whole process of where my skis are at, how, how the turn works, or what muscles am I using, whereas in an alpine turn specifically, if I'm making a left to right turn, my uphill ski is further forward, whereas in telemark, if I'm making a left to right turn, my downhill ski is going to be further forward as I'm in that lunge, in that telemark turn. So that's something to kind of keep a mind of is it's completely different. Um, you do have to kind of relearn certain techniques and things like that. Um, another tip that, that my dad was, I was lucky enough to have my dad kind of help me through it was don't be embarrassed to ski on the bunny hill, on the greens, on the blues when you are learning how to telly. Um, for me, it was I wanted, you know, I wanted to go rip. I wanted to ski the same things my dad was skiing and I couldn't because I couldn't, I was still trying to learn and still trying to pick it up. And for me, the simple, easier way to kind of pick it up and get that feeling down is go to maybe a green, go to one of the begin, more beginner runs. Um, you still do need a little bit of slope, but what I did was if you start, if maybe the fall line's down this way, I'm gonna edge actually across the fall line so across the groomer, maybe right to left, and I'm going to just get into that telemark position, into that lunge where you can kind of get a feel for it, feel how your skis feel, how your legs feel when you're in that lunge, and then how I started, get in that position, feel solid, and then once you're ready for that next turn, stand up, make a parallel turn back the other way, and then get in that other lunge, so then your left knee would be forward, down, you're ready to go, you get comfortable in that lunge position. After you feel comfortable and confident, then you'll slowly transition into turning while you're in that lunge position. So get into the lunge, get comfortable, and then slowly turn. If you're feeling, feeling like you can't quite get there, maybe you just get a little more comfortable in that lunge. And that was something that really stuck with me. Um, I think the other thing is watch other people ski. Watch telemark skiers ski and how they're turning because that's something that makes it so awesome is we're all different we all have different styles different turns things like that but it still all goes back to the one thing that we're all similar with is we're all doing it to make a telemark turn so watch other people really kind of familiarize yourself with different turns different styles and then get comfortable with your own um, we have some content out there that kind of shows tips and tricks and things like that. Um, definitely something that we want to do more of this year. It's kind of do, maybe there's one certain thing you're struggling with. Um, so yeah, I would just say, don't be afraid to get on that bunny hill practice. Um, you're going to crash. How you get better is how fast you pop up from those crashes. Um, hopefully if you're on the bunny hill, it's not too hard of a slam, but just repetition, repetition with that lunge, really getting familiar with it um, is a big tip for me. Uh, moving on to the next question, um, Justin Schaefer asks, what has been your best day skiing? Where and what made it so good? Um, this is a hard one. Um, I don't necessarily know if I can pick just one day as my best day skiing. I have probably mm, five to ten really good days and awesome days that I'll never forget. Um, I guess probably, I mean all of them, definitely on the tele skis. Um, I would probably say we were up north at Snow Basin here in Utah. Um, me, my dad, my brother, um, we were all skiing. Um, my brother was just finally starting to pick up the telly turn, and it was a super awesome day. There's a tiny little boot pack up north, um, 
hike up one of the ridges and you got about 10, 15 turns of fresh. It was snowing, you know, every run you'd hike up, you'd ski it down, it was a fresh line. And it was super awesome to see my little brother ski fresh powder on the Telemark setup for kind of the first time. And, you know, it took him one or two turns to kind of figure it out. You know, it's a little bit more, you're leaning back. Um, and he picked it up really quick and it was super fun just to see him and my dad and me just having a fun time on the tellies and there wasn't a lot of people around. Um, that was a really fun day. Um, I think for me, it's spending time with friends and family. Making those telemark turns is really what stands out to me, what I enjoy. Um, there's numerous days here skiing with the boys. Uh, Pebble Creek a couple years ago got initiated, had to ski low top leathers, some Rosignol Black Widows. That day was awesome, I'll never forget it. Um, it took me probably an hour to get from the top to bottom and I probably spent more time sliding than I did skiing, but never forget it. Um, there's definitely a couple days. So yeah, that kind of runs through my couple of questions for the first lowdown with me on the question and answers from you guys answered by me. So. I want to do more of these guys. Um, if you have questions, if you have concerns, shoot it to me on Instagram, um, send an email to us here at Free Heal Life, um, and I'd love to make some more of these with you guys. So uh, yeah, for sure. Hopefully you guys are out skiing this holiday week. Um, make some turns for all of us here at the shop. Um, keep enjoying it. As always guys, be sure to follow us on Instagram, telemarkskiermagazine.com. Check us out. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email. As always, guys, it's been Miles on the Lowdown. Peace.